Well, back to the Dutes Alice here. I got a new PTO clutch. So we're gonna take this one off. It's cold out. <laughs> My bucket's full of ice now. Yeah, it's a Saturday after Thanksgiving and it was 22 degrees this morning. A little chilly, but let's see if uh, we can get that thing off of there. It's about 11 in the morning right now. In the sun, it's 40, but it's really not 40. It's colder than that. But let's see if we can get that turd off. All right, let's see here. I got the puller on the ring. I've taken this off so many times, you don't even need a wrench. You can just turn it with your hand and it will pull right off. There it's coming. Let's just pull this thing out. It's coming. Then we got to take off those 5 8 head bolts that hold the whole deal onto the block. All right, you get the idea. All right, let's see. There's four bolts here. Here's the first one up here. Uno. Let's see. Dos. Trace. And then there's one more over here. Quattro. Okay. Now I'll take that off. Cool. Alright, let me take off my little alligator tester clip over here. Oh, it doesn't want to come off. All right, so I'm gonna hook this wire over here. I'm gonna hook my alligator clip and it's off. All right, so I got my uh, replacement clutch here. Kind of funny, but there's an aftermarket company called Stens, and this is like a China part. It's called 810. So it's kind of like an 8 instead of an S. 810s. Anyway, so let's open this thing up. Let's see what we got in here. Hopefully, let's see. Let's see if we can get her open. We got here. Here we go. An upgrade you won't regret. Gen three PTO clutches with advanced technology from eight ten. Well, let's see what this thing's all about. It's pretty heavy. Okay, let's see what's in this magic little box. There we go. They even give you instructions. What do you know? So let's just talk about this. This is the old style clutch here, and this is the new style clutch. Now, from what I understand, the new style clutches are an enclosed unit. All the clutch action is within this sealed unit. The old ones, the clutch is external with these springs and everything else. So this one just mounts on the crankshaft from what I understand. And then you put a pin in one of these holes, which is called like an anti-rotational pin or something. Let's see what the instructions say here. Let's see. So measure source voltage. It says it should be 13.2 to 14 volts. Okay. Inspect wire harness, remove deck belts, whatever. Determine clutch orientation. We already have the right clutch, hopefully. Remove existing clutch, done. Seven, inspect crankshaft. We're good with that. One, install the drive pulley and spacer. Uh, let's see. Important, the end of the crankshaft does not come into contact with the D spacer. If there was no D spacer on the, on the machine, do not install our D spacer. Hmm. Install new clutch. Align crankshaft keyway to the clutch key and slip the new clutch onto the crankshaft. Blah, 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 blah. Do not strike or hammer. <laughs> install clutch bolt and washer if applicable. Let's see. If a new bolt is used, use the chart below 
So I believe that we have a, a 7 16 20 bolt, because it takes a 5 8 So it's saying 55, 50 to 55 foot pounds. Yeah, let's just see what this thing's all about. Maybe this is the spacer. They're unclear about what the stuff is. There's some other little bracket here. That must be the anti-rotation pin. Oh, I think it's heavy, holy cow. So here's the actual clutch. Let's see if we can get it out of this bag and then we'll check it out. Right, let's check this thing out. So here's maybe what they call the D spacer. This thing has a kind of like a key built into it already. So I'm not sure what this is for, but um, we're going to have to take the key out of that crank, probably, since this has a key in it. See that in there? Hard to see. Let me zoom in. There's a key, like, molded into it. Let's flip it over and look at the back. See that? There's, like, a key in there. And they give you this wiring harness, which I don't really understand. Oh, I see. So... The Dutes has two wires on this side here, which is red on this. I guess we'll go to the yellow wire, which was the positive. And this black side will go to the ground wire. So we just got to plug this plug into here to get our wire. Okay, I got the plug in there. I've got our little pigtail here. Let's go back to these uh, instructions again. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. It says... It's important the end of the crankshaft doesn't come into con contact with the D-spacer. If there was no D-spacer on the machine, do, you, do not install our D-spacer. We didn't have a D-spacer, which I assume is this thing. So I guess we'll bag it. Now, what, what's this little bushing thing? I have no idea. It doesn't tell you. Ay -ay -ay. Let's see. Install new clutch. Line crankshaft keyway to the clutch key and slide the new clutch onto the crankshaft. If there isn't a built-in key on the clutch, the key must be inserted in the crankshaft before sliding on the clutch. Well, I have a built-in key. Getting the alignment right on the key and keyway can be tricky, so it will require some precision. Do not hit it with a hammer. Okay, I think we can handle that. Let's see, what do we got here? It's strongly recommended to use a new bolt and washer, which must be clean and dry, whatever. Huh. A torque wrench must be used in this step. Hold the D-spacer. Must be held with a wrench while torquing the bolt to prevent the crankshaft from turning. Huh. They don't tell you what that other thing is. Well, here we go. Install the deck belt. Connect the clutch and anti-rotation device. Let's see. Connect the clutch wire. Torque the mower blade bolts burnish the clutch reduce engine to half throttle and engage the clutch allow the blades to reach full speed and hold for 10 seconds well, we don't have blades disengage the clutch and allow the blades to come to a complete stop for 15 seconds <laughs> repeat this process 30 times to burnish the clutch that's funny oh man well they don't tell you what this thing is here this little spacer thing they don't tell you what this thing is so typical china instructions huh that's all i'm gonna say all right well anyways let's take the key out of this engine crankshaft and see if we can slide that thing over it well i just bumped the key so i can move the crankshaft and now the key is on the top which is going to make this a little easier to get out now i took a hammer and i hammered the key in with a screwdriver which makes it go over that little bump there then it comes out there's a little bit of rustiness on this crank so i think i am going to try to just clean it up a little bit with some super fine sandpaper before i slide that new one on i just took this little piece of 400 grit sandpaper and clean that off a little bit now i'm going to spray it with some uh probably some brake cleaner and then i'll wipe it off and then we'll put a little bit of oil on there i guess before we put it back together all right well i slid it on over the keyway and uh 
appears to be on all the way, but there's a huge like gap over here. So I'm not sure how we cover that gap up unless we put on the part from the old clutch, which must be this little ring. Let's try that. Mm. Not quite, it's a little bit off. Unless the clutch isn't bottomed out all the way. I can't really tell in the back if it's bottomed out all the way or not. Huh, do the belts line up? Let me see. Well, it appears that the belt lines up perfect. So I think it's all the way on. This little spacer hangs out a hair, which again, I don't know if that's allowable or not, but I'm gonna torque it as is and we're gonna see what happens if it works. If it doesn't work, then maybe we gotta shave that spacer down a hair and put it back together, but we're gonna try it like this. All right, here's the next issue. This is the so-called anti-rotational pin, which does not have much meat around it here but this bolt that goes in there will not fit in there it's just off ever so slightly but it won't fit and i'm kind of scared to drill it out because there's really not much meat on there whatsoever but i'm gonna have to try i think this bolt is a 7 16 so that being said i'll put a 7 16 drill bit on my drill and see if we can pop it through maybe or it might just take a round file and try to hog that hole out a little bit first there might be a burr in there or something but that's our next issue okay i took this old-fashioned little round file and i just hogged out that hole of hair and now the bolt fits in there so let's see if we can mount it back up i got the old torque wrench out here they say between 50 and 55 pounds so i'll do 52 and a half now i don't know if this is going to be too much force and it's going to crank over the engine or not. Hopefully the compression will hold it back. But um, I got that anti-rotational pin mounted on the top up there. And uh, this is really our last step here. So let's see what happens if we uh, get this torque wrench on there. Yeah, it's turning the freaking engine over, of course. Of course it is, right? Yep right through compression so how are we going to stop that from happening there's nothing that we can hold it's not like we can hold the flywheel or something um yeah that's a bummer i mean the only thing is that if i took this air filter out of here i might be able to hold the u-joint on the that comes off the flywheel um how do you get this thing out i've never taken this out before Let's see, I don't really know. Can you just push that forwards? Hmm. Not sure how you get that out, to be honest with you. But that's about the only thing I can think of is holding that back, huh? Ay ay ay. All right, well, I figured out how to hold it. Underneath the tractor, there's a U-joint about where that adjustable wrench is. I can put that wrench up into the U-joint and then the flywheel doesn't turn. Well, I need a helper. I can't do it by myself. I can't reach the two of them. So I'll have to wait for someone to come home and then maybe they can do the torque wrench and I'll hold that underneath. But it's challenging. So this is on hold until we can get that bolt tightened up. So I got that bolt torqued down and I got the idler pulley and the belt back on. And, uh, I'm not sure that the wires are exactly where I want them to be for now, but I'm gonna try to start up the tractor and test it out. Haven't been started for, I think it's been three weeks. And it's pretty cold out right now. It's probably like, I'm gonna guess 30 to 35 degrees. Let's see what happens. What's promising? Come on, baby. Come on, baby, you can do it. Oh, 
Oh, you jerk. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> or whatever that said turn it on and off 30 times I don't like that I got less than 12 volts I still think something screwed up with the charging system that we dropped the magnet or the stators messed up or something but it's working for now at least <laughs> whoa that was crazy why did it do that? I turned off the PTO and it was like I turned off the ignition switch. That's weird. Maybe this switch is messed up here too. That shouldn't be doing that. I wonder if this parts dudes has a good switch in it. Things frozen solid. That's not good. Let's see. Well, there we go. Okay. We're burnishing it. Whatever they call it. The switch must have a problem. I got less than 12 volts on my volt meter not appropriate either. It seems like I'm only getting that issue when I'm in gear. switch for the back PTO is shot too so I can't even just swap them so that sucks yeah something's wonky in that switch I think we're gonna buy a new switch too I 
I should spray some electrical contact cleaner in it. That might help out. Parking brake's not working. Not sure if it's frozen or what the heck happened there. dies on me. Nope, didn't die this time. That's good. I think I drove it for about 15 minutes and never gave me any problems. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's fixed. They said to turn the clutch on and off 30 times to burnish it. I did that. Never gave me any problems. So only problem I have is the parking brake linkage isn't working now. So I don't know if it got knocked off in all of our adventures here or what. But I'll have to put that, figure out what's going on with that. And we gotta put the hood on and basically maybe secure the wires that come out of the clutch in a better manner. And then we can move some firewood. So for now, I think we're good. <laughs> 